Hello everyone, welcome to this video. So in this particular video, we are going to deploy our application onto a remote cloud server. And we are going to make use of AWS for the same. So if you are new to this channel, watching this video for the first time, do watch the earlier videos to get some context. The link is in the description to the entire playlist. So we are building a complete application from scratch using Spring Boot and React. So this is a complete full stack app development course where we are learning the nitty gritties of building the application, how to use Spring Boot, how can you use React and even how you can deploy. And deployment is what is covered in this video. So if you have never used AWS, don't worry at all. This is completely beginner friendly. I'm going to break down everything in very simple terms for you all. And I'm going to show you step by step what are you supposed to do in the dashboard and where you are supposed to click why an option exists, everything from ground up. Okay, so if you have never used AWS, don't worry. You will be able to deploy your application onto AWS cloud. Also, you don't need a paid account or you don't need to spend to deploy our application. Since we are learning, we will be making use of AWS free tier. AWS allows you to create and sign up for a free account. So we'll be making use of that and learning how you can deploy. But for production grade applications, you will need a paid account. But since we are learning, we don't need it for this tutorial. So that's all from my end. If you haven't liked, subscribed, turned on the bell notification icon, please do so. This is friendly reminder. Also comment and let me know from where you are joining and watching us, who you are, what you are doing currently. I would love to know more about you. So without a further ado, let's jump right in. So now we have an application up and running. We have the React frontend, which is running on a server. This React frontend is talking to the APIs here, which is running on a separate embedded Tomcat server. And then we have a database, which is also running separately. Okay, right now we are making use of H2 but we can easily switch to a separate database server if needed like Postgres or MySQL. Now, how do we get this application live up and running on a server or on the internet? So for that, we are going to make use of AWS. Now, what is AWS? If you are new here, AWS is Amazon Web Service. All right, so here you can see this is the ad and this is the official website, aws.amazon.com. So you can switch over to AWS and here you'll see like start building on AWS today. So this homepage keeps on changing a lot. All right. But you can explore this complete uh, website. You can see these are all the services that Amazon offers. Okay. There are lots and lots of services. Okay. So you can just go through the website. But what I'm here talking about is you are going to need an AWS account if you wish to deploy your application that we have built, right? You won't be needing a paid account. Okay, so if you search for AWS free here, you'll see like this link over here. This, this is the link to the free tier of Amazon. Okay, you can see. So if you are new to Amazon, you get free trials, you get 12 months free access to certain services. So you can like take a look at uh, different services and what is free in that services. So for example, EC2 is one of the services. You get free tier of 12 months, which is 750 hours per month. Okay, you can read what all is included and what is not. So different services have different things. Like for S3, you have five GB of standard storage for 12 months free, okay? Which is good, so you can explore this free tier. Even if you come over here on, uh, aws.amazon.com if you click on get started you'll be taken to the same page okay so i just thought of showing you this separately like how you can google and come to that same page because i'm not sure like if they change the home page in future of course you won't be able to find this link but yeah you need an account for getting this for free okay also if you are starting any sort of service in your aws account be sure to shut it down later on okay because you are being billed for per usage basis. Okay, so 
for number of hours and all. So different services have different terms. Here for S3, you're being billed for how much of storage you are using. So you can see these are all hourly things. Okay, so for the number of hours, you're going to be billed and also number of data, like how much data is are you storing. So be sure to shut whatever you are using once you have tested. Of course, if you're creating a production grade application, it makes sense to keep your services up and running so that users across the internet can access and use it. But since we are learning, okay, we can sign up for a free account, you can learn and then you can shut the services to have free credits for some other project. Okay, so I would encourage you all to create a free account. Okay, click on this and get a free account set up. The account creation process is fairly simple, like you will be asked for some information about yourself, who you are and everything. Okay, and if you have an existing AWS account, you can even sign up for that. All right, so just do that step. I already have an AWS account, so I'm going to sign in to that. So after signing up, you're going to be presented with the dashboard that looks something like this. Okay, you will have uh, different services access over here. You can search for services. Okay, from here search bar, you can take a look at all the service and so on. Okay, but before playing around with AWS console, let us switch over to presentation and let us understand what's happening right now with our application. So this is a overview of how our application is working. This is our Spring Boot application here. Okay, you have this hosted on a Tomcat server, which is embedded. You have controller, service and repository. You have a separate database. Now this database right now is H2 database, but of course you can have a separate database like PostgreSQL or MySQL. Okay, so here you have the React application, which is running on a server itself, like localhost colon 3000, that's support, like how we are running it locally. And you can access this React application from the browser and using Postman, you can access the APIs. Okay, so you can directly bypass the React application and access the APIs as well. All right, so this is the entire application and the entire flow. So whatever like interaction you are doing with the React app or the Postman, the response flows in this direction. Like it goes from controller, service, repository, and then it talks to the database and then comes back. So that is what you're seeing over here, the response back. Now let us talk about how we are going to deploy this. So to deploy this, we will be needing few AWS services. Okay, so React app needs a ser server. Okay, so we are going to host it on S3. Now what is S3? I'm going to explain this to you shortly. We have the Spring Boot application which also needs a server. And right now locally it is being run on a local server that is embedded Tomcat, which we get itself with the Spring Boot. But we are going to host it on EC2 instance. And database is running on RDS in the Amazon Web Service account. Okay, so RDS is a service. So let us talk about what is S3 and uh, what does each mean, okay? So first we'll understand RDS. Now what is RDS? So RDS stands for Relational Database Service. It's an Amazon service, okay? It's, it's called Amazon RDS as well. Okay, so it's a service for setting up, operating, scaling a relational database in the cloud. Okay, so like we know like Amazon or AWS is offering us cloud services and these services are hosted in cloud. So if you need a database in the cloud, you can make use of Amazon RDS. Okay, so that is one. And whenever you set up RDS, you get options to choose the database engine. Okay, like in market if you see there are different database vendors like PostgreSQL, MySQL, Oracle, SQL Server. So with RDS you can select which database vendor you want. So whether you want to use PostgreSQL, MySQL, okay. There is a step-by-step -step, uh, form that you have to fill in when setting up the database. And if you go over here to console, okay, you can simply search over here for RDS you'll see this managed relational database service. Okay, you can go over here and you can take a look at the dashboard. Okay, there won't be anything over here. Okay, in uh, your account if it's new, but uh, but I'll, I'll walk you through as to how you can create your database. Okay, but this is about RDS. Now what is EC2? Okay, so EC2 stands for Elastic Cloud Compute. 
sorry, it's not Elastic Cloud Compute. It's Elastic Compute Cloud. I'm sorry about that. Okay. So it's a service uh, using which you can host your applications into a cloud. Okay. So it's like you're getting an EC2 instance, which is like a virtual server in the cloud. You can think of it like a virtual server and you host your application over there. You move your source code over there and then your application runs in the cloud. Okay. That is how we are going to make use of it, but we are not going to make use of EC2 directly. Okay. What we are going to do is we are going to make use of something called as AWS Elastic Beanstalk. Okay. So this is a service which helps us deploying applications. Okay. So that is something that we are going to make use of over here. Okay. Then talking about react app, we are going to make use of S3. Okay. Now what is S3? S3 stands for simple storage service. Okay. So you can host your static files, images, all of that on S3 server. Okay. So if you're building an app image upload app, let's say, or if you're storing profile pictures, product images in your application, you can make use of S3 bucket. Okay. So there are buckets in S3. You can create buckets. Okay. And buckets is nothing but a group of object. All right. So since the front end application will have static files like HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and so on, you can make use of S3 over here. So these are the services that we are going to use. Okay. So first thing, what we need to do is we need to set up a database. So here in the Amazon RDS, okay, you will have this entire dashboard. What you need to do is you need to come over here and you need to say, create a database. Okay. Now, when you say create a database, you will see that you have this form, right? So you have this, how you want to create a database, like choose the database creation method. So do you want to create in a standard way or easy create? So depending on what you choose, it will change the options below. Okay. Easy create will show you a few options so that the form looks less overwhelming. Standard create will show you some more options. Okay. You can like configure a bit more. All right. But here you will see, we don't have option for the H2 database, right? You can go ahead with MySQL or PostgreSQL but I'll select Postgres SQL over here. Okay. If you scroll down, you can select any database engine, by the way, you can see all the options here. Okay. If you scroll down here, it will ask you for version. You can choose the latest or have the default one selected. This is important. So here it is asking you what sort of template you want to use. What is your use case over here? Okay. So our use case is learning, right? Unless and until you are using it for production, you can choose the production over here. Development testing also is an option. You need free tier. We don't want to pay anything. Okay. Now, depending on what you select over here, like these options will be enabled or disabled. Okay. So I I'll stick to free tier. I don't need a uh, multi AZ DB cluster or something like that. Okay. Database instance identifier. Okay. So you need to enter the database instance identifier. I'll say challenge app, something like this. And uh, you can scroll down. It's asking you for credentials. So you can see the master credentials over here. Okay. So you can enter the credentials. What are your credentials that you want to have? So let's say my username is Postgres and uh, I'll enter the password as well. Okay. You can enter any password that you want. Okay. So password thing is done. Then you scroll down. Okay. Here, since you have selected free at the top here, you'll see micro being selected. Okay. Now, if you change this to something else, if you want to change this to something else, others are expensive. You can see like this is the capacity of the instance. So here, this is a very basic instance, like a small instance with two virtual CPUs, one GB RAM, and uh, this is a network. Okay. If you want to switch to a better version, like eight gig RAM or 16 gig RAM, you have to pay more. Okay. But I don't want to pay. I'm just playing and uh, learning over here in short, not playing, Actually, I'm learning. Okay. SSD, what is the storage that you want? So it's 20 by default and minimum is also 20 as you can see over here. And minimum is what we'll go ahead with. We are not going to have that much of data. Okay. If you scroll down here, okay, you have all the different settings. Okay. This is important. Public access. So do you want a public access or a public IP to this database, we need to choose yes, because we are going to 
access this database from our Spring Boot application as well, right? So I'll have this selected, scroll down, and uh, I don't think there is anything else that you need to keep in mind. Okay, so it's a seven day free tier, just have that selected and uh, scroll down. Estimated monthly cost. So if you see any cost over here, it means that uh, you have selected some of the paid options. Okay, so I'm not seeing any cost over here. Okay. So I, what I will do is I'll just stick to this and uh, it's, it's clearly telling me that there is free tier available to me for 12 months. So once this is done and you're sure that all the settings are right, you can hit create. Okay. Oh, so master password is invalid. Probably I gave it a very simple password. Okay. You need to make sure you follow these guidelines. Okay. So once I change the password, I come down and I say create the database. Okay. You'll see a small loader here. The database will begin creating. Okay. You'll see this pop up. I don't need any add ons. So I'll just close this, but we'll wait for a while until this database is done creating. And this will take some time. Okay. This creation process will take some time. Now what is happening is we will switch over to this diagram. So this RDS setup we have done. Okay, we'll get, get all the credentials for that. Okay. Now here for deployment, we will be deploying using a jar. Okay, we'll be creating a jar file of our application and then we'll be deploying. Okay. And also we need to make sure that we are pointing to a Postgres uh, SQL database because in RDS we have created the engine or we selected the engine as Postgres SQL. Okay. So we need to switch to Postgres SQL and for that we'll switch over to start.spring.io here. I'll select Maven. I'll say add dependencies and here I'll say Postgres SQL driver. I'll go to explore. And if you scroll down here, you will get this dependency. So just copy this dependency. Okay. Just come over to your application here. Go to pom.xml. Just add this dependency. This is important because we now need our application to work with the Postgres SQL database. And why are we doing this? So that it works in production. Okay. So I'll just refresh this. Also, I would say to, to not have any problems, I will also comment this out. So we don't need an H2 database if you're making use of Postgres, right? So this is done. Okay. Now what I need to do is I, I need to add some settings into the application dot properties. So, so since we have changed the database, okay, I'll go to application dot properties here. Okay. We'll add some properties that are specific to Postgres SQL. So this is specific to H2 database. I'll get this commented. Okay. So I would encourage you all to add these properties. Okay. Which is the spring data source URL. What does this do? This is giving you or helping the, the uh, application to point to a URL of database. Okay. So this is the, this tells that this is a Postgres SQL database. This is the URL of the database. This is a host name and the port. And this is the database name. Okay. This is a username password using which your application can connect. This is the platform of the database. We are making use of Postgres SQL. Then you have this uh, DDL auto create and drop. So you want uh, things to create and drop. Okay. So every time you make a change to the schema, the hibernate, which uh, is inbuilt uh, in Spring Boot, okay, on which Spring Boot runs essentially. Okay. So what it's going to do is it is going to create and drop or alter based on uh, if, if you are doing any change into the schema. And this is the platform. Okay. So you may need to add these settings and we also need Postgres SQL database. Okay. So now since we need the Postgres SQL database, if you switch over to Amazon RDS over here, okay, you will see that the database that we had created is up and running. You can see the status is available now and you also have access to the endpoint over here. So this is the endpoint. All right. And since when setting up this database in the cloud, we had mentioned that we need this to be 
Postgres SQL database. So the database engine of this is Postgres SQL. And what we can do is we can copy this URL endpoint. I'll switch over to IntelliJ. I'll come over here and here in the URL part over here, instead of localhost, I can happily add this URL here, something like this. Okay. So this URL I'm adding, I have this port number. We have this database name, which is Postgres. Here I have the username. Okay. And here I need to enter the password. So I'll just enter the password. Also, if we are deploying this via Elastic Beanstalk, we also need one more property over here. And the property I'm talking about is the server port property. So I'll say server dot port is equal to 5000. So if you're installing or if you're deploying your application via the Elastic Beanstalk, which we're actually doing in this video, be sure to add this property. All right, I'll also change my password over here. All right, so I have made the necessary changes. Now, what we need to do is we need to make use of Maven to create a jar file, right? So we would be deploying our application onto Elastic Beanstalk in the form of a jar file, right? And uh, one way is you come to like the browser and you install Maven. So you can search for install Maven, okay? And you'll come to this link. You have, you have a way to install Maven if you want to, but if you're using Spring Boot, you already have access to Maven wrapper. So if you come over here, okay, here under .mvn, you have this folder called wrapper, which has Maven wrapper .jar. So we can make use of this as well to create a jar file of your Spring Boot application. How? I'll show this to you. So I'll head over to terminal here, okay. And uh, if you open the terminal from IntelliJ, it will be opening in your project directory, okay, which is okay. Now I need to run this command here. So I'm going to say dot forward slash mvnw package. Okay. And I'll press enter. Now the moment I press enter, you will see this kind of processing happening over here. Okay. And uh, you should see, okay, you can see GPA and all is also working. All right. And uh, you should see everything worked fine. Okay. There is there is no issue as such. Even GPA uh, was configured successfully. You can see over here, create table challenge. This also worked successfully, which means that uh, the connection to the database, that the remote database that we have configured in the form of RDS has also worked and there were no issues. You can even run your application over here and test the APIs whether it's working perfectly fine after you switch to remote RDS instance, okay? Now what has happened is this worked fine. We have the uh, jar file created over here. So you can see replacing main artifact. You can see here, this is the location. So within your challenge project, within your project directory target, under target directory, you have the jar file. So if you go over here under target, you have this jar file, okay? This is what we need to deploy. This is auto generated. I mean, we generated it with the help of the command, okay? Now what we need to do is we'll come over to our browser. Now here in the browser, I have RDS running and uh, what I need to do is I need to head over to services and I need to select Elastic Bean Stock over here. So if you are having any sort of uh, applications or environment created previously like I do, okay, uh, you will see a screen like this, okay, but I would request you all to click over here, Elastic Bean Stock and if you're new, uh, to Elastic Beanstalk, you will see a welcome page like this. All right. Now what we need to do is we need to create an application. So I'm going to create an application over here and you will be given steps over here. You need to follow these steps. Okay. And get your application up and running. So I'm going to say over here, challenge app. Okay. And new, I can, you can give any name over here. The name that you give over here, you can even add a tag and the name you give over here will also define the environment name over here. It is auto generated. Okay. If you go down here, you can uh, select the platform. So I have, I'm deploying a Java application. Spring Boot of course runs on Java. I'll select Java. If you scroll down, you'll see platform and everything being auto populated and you can leave these to default because it will of course select the default versions and the recommended ones. You can scroll down. You can change this if you have any version specific requirements. All right. 
Now here it says sample application. So I'll say I don't need sample application. I need to upload my own code and the version can be v1 and I'll be uploading using a local file. Okay, because we are uploading a jar file. So from here, I'm going to choose the file. Now, when choosing the file, navigate to the target folder where we have generated the jar file and select the jar file. Okay, then scroll down. Be sure that you have selected single instance over here, which is free tier eligible, which means that you won't be charged for this. All right. If you have any other requirement, you can select those. I'll go next. And uh, here you have some service access that you need to configure. Okay. So do you need any services to uh, be accessed? Okay. Also, if you go to the previous step, we didn't see the option related to the database. Okay. So, okay, so there was no option related to database here. So I think we might be asked the same in the next step. So I'll say next over here. Uh, here we'll leave defaults, we'll go next, okay. Here you'll see, you will have option to set up networking database and all, okay. So if you scroll down here, you have the option for database here. It's in the third step. So you need to enable database here, all right. And uh, so this option allows you to integrate an RDS SQL database with our environment. Okay. So when you are deploying your application using Elastic Beanstalk, you are actually creating an environment and also an application. Okay. So an application is created and along with application an environment is created to run the application. Okay. And uh, what we're doing over here is we are telling AWS that, hey, I also need access to RDS SQL database, which we have already created. So if you go over here, we have already created the RDS database. Okay, here, this is the database. So we need access to this database because our application uses this. Okay, so what I can do is I can select it from here. Challenge app snapshot. I think this is the one. Okay. So it will select this. Okay. And, uh, I don't think others are, so this is the, this is my, be sure to identify the right one. Okay. Everything else will be auto populated here. You need to enter the password over here. Okay. So I'll add my password like so. Okay. And, uh, then you scroll down here. Okay. And you might be asked for tags over here. So I'll just say next. It will take some time to load normally. So it depends on your internet connection. And uh, sometimes it just takes time. I don't know uh, the reason for this. And if you scroll down here, so you can like configure these settings if you need any custom configuration, but uh, I, I won't be touching anything. I'll just skip to defaults and I'll skip to review over here. Okay. Now we'll review the changes and we will say deploy. So you can see this is our review over here. I have uh, like some services over here. I'm so you can see environment information here. This is our application. So like I said, there is an environment that is created and also the application that is created over here. Okay. If you scroll down, you can see this is a platform. Okay. Here we have configured this database. Okay. Which is hosted on RDS. Here are some default configurations. And if I go down here, I have some environment properties as well. Okay. So we might be needing, or we might be wanting to change the environment properties later on, but let me show that to you. So let me show you the default behavior. If you say submit, all right, the changes get submitted and uh, AWS will begin creating our environment and the application. Okay. And this process will take a little bit of time and you have to be patient with it. Okay. So right now the details are being submitted. And you'll see like uh, it's it's actually like you can see over here, it's launching our environment and it will take few minutes. So I request you to uh, be patient for a while since we are, we have just created this environment and the application, it will take time. And you can see here applications and environment tab, you can see the application and environment that is being created for your application. Okay. So I'll just pause this for a while until this is created. All right, so our application is up and running. You can see environment is successfully launched and the health of the application is okay. So this took some time. I, I should tell you, I had to wait for a while 
okay, to get this up and running. So, but we are here now. You can see all the events that occurred, that happened actually during this entire process, okay. And it took around like 10 minutes for itself to set up, all right. Now, here is the URL of your application that you have got. If you click on this, and if you open it in a separate tab, you'll see, okay, you you get this error over here, okay? Now, we we did not get the 502 gateway error. So if you're getting the NGX uh, gateway error, what you can do is you need to go to the configuration tab over here, okay? And uh, let this load, uh, it's taking a little bit of time. So here, if you scroll down here, you have environment properties, okay? So what you can do is you can click on edit over here you can scroll down and you can add over here server underscore port, okay? And you can add 5000. So why are we adding 5000? Because here in the application properties, I had set that, okay? So this is only if you're getting the 502 gateway error. I'm not getting, so I'm just going to do cancel and uh, I'm getting this white label error page, which means my application is successfully hosted and I can access challenges endpoint, okay? Something like this. You should see an empty array because the challenges are not yet created. You can see over here, it's an empty array, okay? Which means our application is done and it's successfully deployed. You can head over to the applications tab and you should see the application over here running in this environment, right? You can also see all the environments that you have over here. Okay, this is one of the test environment that I uh, was testing something with. But here, this is the environment that we have just created. Okay, and you have access to change history. So you can explore these settings if you need. Okay, also, if you switch over to the diagram here. Now, one question you will ask, hey, Fezel, you said we are deploying it on EC2, but you are using something called as Elastic Beanstalk. What is that? And how does it differ? Why have you not shown us EC2? So here, if you go, okay, what is Elastic Beanstalk? So Elastic Beanstalk is like a platform as a service. Okay, now what I mean over here is, uh, this is a service that is being offered by AWS. Okay, so what this service does is, normally deployment has a lot of things, right? You need to manage the infrastructure, you need to upload your code to the server, configure your server, create an environment for the application to run, all of that. Now what happens is, given that this thing was a little bit complex, Amazon, created Elastic Beanstalk using which developers can easily deploy their application and all the underlying nitty gritties is being abstracted by Elastic Beanstalk and managed by it, okay? So if you go over here to services and if you select EC2, you can even search for EC2, okay? And you can see the description, virtual servers in the cloud. Let me open this in a new tab. You'll see you have one instance running over here, okay? And you can see the challenge app is running over here, okay? So what is happening is Elastic Beanstalk is deploying your application using EC2 in the background, okay? And uh, here in the front end, when you're using Elastic Beanstalk, things look really easy for you, okay? So you, what we did, we just said create a new application. We just went through the steps. We just uploaded our jar file. We just told Elastic Beanstalk what we need and what services we need, do we need to connect to RDS and all. We just mentioned the configuration that we need. What Elastic Beanstalk did is it figured out what all it needs. So it created an application, it created an environment for it to run all of that, okay? And our application is up and running, you can see over here, okay? And in the hindsight, like in the background behind the scenes, it also created a EC2 instance and got our application up and running over there, okay? So actually we are making use of EC2, okay, but via Elastic Beanstalk. And that is why I had mentioned EC2 over here and not Elastic Beanstalk, okay. So RDS is done, EC2 is done. Now we need to host our React application. So let us talk about how can you host React. And for that, we will switch over to Visual Studio Code. So now over here, we are in uh, Visual Studio Code. And what we need to do is we need to prepare our application for deployment, 
all right so first thing we need to do is here we have everything pointing to localhost okay so what we need to do is i will head over to the browser okay i'll head over to our deployment here or the environment and here we have the domain okay so i'll get this domain okay and i'll replace the local host over here with this url okay you can see this replacement is done here all right looks good all right this should work and uh, okay this is one url also for adding the challenge there is one url over here okay so we are doing an api call over here as well so i'll change this as well here something like this okay just make sure that you are entering the right url over here and also you're saving the file okay so now your application is pointing to the uh, server over here okay so i have http two times over here okay so be careful when you are copy pasting uh, let me check over here okay here i don't have http which is all right here i have which is all right so url looks okay all right just be sure to save the changes and here now on terminal we need to run a command so we need to run this command called npm run and i need to say build okay now what this command will do is this will build our react application to create production ready version okay now there is some processing or there are some set of files that we need over here which will be the static files which we'll upload to s3 bucket and we will be hosting our application there and this command will create those static files for us okay so right now we have node modules public and src let me run this command now the moment i run this command you'll see some processing happening and here you will see a new folder appear which is build folder okay and we'll wait for the processing to finish okay this will take a couple of minutes and you can see the processing is done now if you come over here we have this new folder which is built and this is a folder that we will be uploading onto ec2 okay let me uh, sorry not ec2 uh, this will be s3 bucket okay on s3 so i'll switch over here okay and if you take a look at the diagram here oh, we are hosting our react application on s3 so i'll come over here here i will go to services and here you have s3 which is like scalable storage on cloud now here you can host static files okay i have few buckets already created okay i'll create a new bucket okay you can create a bucket here you can say general purpose you can say bucket name is challenge app and you can say live version whatever name you want okay you can scroll down acls disabled okay so here you need to configure things and uh, we'll stick to default settings except that we'll remove this check so we want a uh, public to access like we want public access right because we want this to be hosted and accessible to everyone okay so i'm just going to uncheck this one okay uh, also uh, be sure to choose the region over here so we are not seeing the option to choose the region okay but but yeah if you uncheck the block all public access you you have to acknowledge this okay and if you scroll down you have bucket versioning you can choose the settings that you want over here okay i'll say create a bucket okay so now the bucket is created over here okay this is the bucket live version what i can do is i can upload all the files from the build folder so you need to select upload here you need to head over to add files and uh, i'll head over to spring boot and i would navigate to the project folder now the under project folder you will have this build folder that we have just got created i'll select all the files i'll say open so just upload everything okay and uh, then what you need to do is you need to say upload over here okay so this will upload and you should see all the progress over here okay now what you can do is here we have uploaded everything everything has succeeded so i'll say close and here i'll uh, switch over to properties okay and if you scroll down here okay here you will have a settings okay here you have this setting at the end which says static 
website hosting. So actually we are hosting a website, right? And this is disabled. So what you need to do is you need to enable this. Okay. And you are saying host a static website and you need to specify the default home page. So I'll say index.html. Okay. You can also specify the error page, but we don't want to specify right now. All right. And uh, I'll just say save over here. Okay. Now, the moment you scroll down to the same setting, static website hosting, you'll see this URL that you have got access to. And if you click on this, okay, let me click. You'll be taken to the web page over here. Okay, so now you're getting this error 403 forbidden. Now we are getting this error because we might need to do one more additional step to set the bucket policy. Okay, so what I will do is I'll Google S3 bucket policy for public access. Okay, so you can Google something like this and you will see a few URLs appear and you can select this URL over here from the AWS. So this says setting permissions for website access. I'll choose this and here you'll see that we need to like uncheck this block all public access, which we have done already while creating the bucket. And also you need to add the bucket policy. Okay, so what we can do is we can copy this policy. Okay, this is a policy we need to add. And you can see the steps over here. Under buckets, choose permission. Under bucket policy, you need to choose edit and just paste this over there and save it. Also, we need to update the bucket name here with whatever name we are having. So I'll come over here in our S3 bucket. I'll go over here at the top. Okay, and here under permissions, we need to, so here you can see block all public access. Okay, I guess this is off. Okay, because we had done this or during the creation and here we have bucket policy and there is no policy that we have added. Okay, you also have a link over here to uh, learn more about the bucket policy. So you can click over there and you can learn more. All right, you can see there are a few examples as well. So you will find example policies uh, also uh, if you wish to do a particular settings. Okay, so so yeah, this is this is the this is that page over here, but I'll say edit. Okay, I'll paste my policy that I've copied. So I'll copy the bucket ARN. You can see this bucket name appear over here and I'll paste the same over here like so. Don't make any other changes like there is forward slash and star. Leave it as it is. I'll just paste this over here and uh, I'll just simply say save over here it's saved okay it is done and now let us refresh this let us see if we are able to access okay we are not getting any error let me see so no output is coming in let us see the console as to what is happening now if i switch over to the console you will see that the css file is not found Okay, let me troubleshoot this. So CSS in the build folder is under static. Okay, and let me see if static folder exists on uh, my S3 bucket. So here if you see, if I refresh, I don't have the static folder uploaded. So I guess it did not get selected when I was uploading. So be sure that you're uploading everything. Okay, I'll tell you what happened. I, I understood. So here you added the files, right? But to add the folder. So if you see static is a folder, right? So even though I selected static, it was not uploaded because I had uploaded individual files. Okay. So you need to upload static as well separately and uh, you need to upload all of them. Okay. It says upload and we'll wait for a while. It'll take some time and uh, once it's done, okay, we should see the confirmation and the close button here. So you can see now you can see the static folder. Okay. So be sure when you say upload, you add the files first and then you add the folder as well. If there are any folders, folders won't be uploaded by default. That's a lesson, right? So this is done now and uh, we'll hit refresh and here also we need to hit refresh. All right. So we see 
the monthly challenges interface you can see the application is now hosted on amazon you can see this is the url that we have got from s3 or amazon service okay now here you can see and on the right hand side we are you have already started to get errors okay and one of the errors is a little bit familiar it says that the website has been blocked by course policy so this error looks a little bit familiar where our application has been blocked by course policy okay and uh, i believe you must be knowing what this issue is so right now what is happening is if you come to intellij okay we need to enable course right in intellij in our controller so if you head over to our controller file here you have enabled access to backend from localhost but you haven't enabled access to our application from the remote website or from the remote server which is this one right you haven't enabled that so you need to enable this so to do that what i'm going to do is i'm going to copy this url because this is a url that we need to allow and i'll come over here okay and I need to also keep the access for localhost, right? So I'm going to add something like this, okay? And I'm going to add one more value over here, separated by comma, like so, okay? So I'll change this to new line, and you can see like there are two values that have been added, okay? Something like this. I can save this, okay? You can now head over to the terminal, and you need to generate a new jar right because we we have made a change to our application code right and we need to make a new jar and that new jar we need to redeploy to our application so that our front end works okay so this new jar will be generated now okay you should see a success okay it's it's done build success now what i need to do is i need to head over here to our uh, elastic beanstalk I need to click on upload and deploy here on the right hand side. I need to choose the file. Okay, so I'll go to the JP, like my project name is JPA. I'll go to the target folder and I'll select the jar. You can change the version if needed, version label here, and you can say deploy. So this will take some time for this new deployment to happen, but it won't take a lot of time as compared to the first time deployment, okay. So we'll wait for a while until this completes. It hardly took three, four minutes for this to update, okay? But now if I head over to our front-end application and if I say refresh, we don't see any errors, okay? And now here, if I add anything, January, and if I say description like this, okay? If I save this, or submit this you'll see it's working and now this is the actual live application so here this application is running right now on the amazon web services where you have the front end being deployed to uh, amazon s3 you have uh, the spring boot application deployed to ec2 instance via elastic beanstalk and you have the database running in Amazon RDS. You can test this, you can refresh, you can add more challenges if you want. February, create app, something like this. You can even enhance this app if you need, okay? But here's your little project and this is how you have deployed it, okay? So you have browser. From browser, you can make a call to your React application like we are accessing and React app will interact with EC2 instance to like get the code running and your code will interact with database that exists on RDS, okay? And uh, you can even access the APS directly via Postman, as you can see. I hope this was useful and I hope you have learned a lot by building this.